सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट दी लेट ऑनसेट पैराप्रेजिया इन अ टूबरकल स्पाइन पेशेंट सो दिस इज द केस एग्जाम्पल अ फोर्टीन ईयर ओल्ड मेल चाइल्ड प्रेजेंट विद द स्पेस्टिक पैराप्रेसिस सिंस टू ईयर्स विद द कैफोटिक डिफॉर्मिटी एज सीन इन द एक्सरे एंड सी टी हेयर इन द डॉट्सल स्पाइन रीजन एंड ऑल्सो द पेशेंट पेरेंट्स गेव अ हिस्ट्री ऑफ अ एक्टिव टूबरकल स्पाइन रीजन एट द एज ऑफ टू ईयर so this was this was the x ray and the ct of the patient now how to proceed in these cases firstly we should know the cause here so for that we should know the various type of the paraplegia so we have early onset paraplegia which is a paraplegia of active disease so here the compression it occurs within the 2 year of the occurrence of the tubercular spine and the cause is because of the compression mechanical compression by a retropulse pus granulation tissue bony squamosum or disc cashier tissue or a instability because of the bony destruction so this is the early onset paraplegia where the paraplegia occur within 2 year of the occurrence of the tb so here we are talking about the late onset paraplegia so here the neural symptom the neurological deficit it appear after a symptom free period of at least 2 year after the healed status so when the patient was having tubercular spine lesion then patient has a asymptomatic period of 2 year and later on the patient develops neurological deficit so this is known as the late onset paraplegia so here the cause is because of the either transaction of the cord by the bony ridge or by constriction of the spinal cord by the granulation and the fibrous tissue so as we can see here so this is the internal gibbous that is formed which has led to the constriction of the spinal cord at this level and leading to the late onset neurological deficit now what are the all changes that are expected in the spinal cord so because of movement that is produced over all these years so it may lead to the thinning of the spinal cord spinal cord edema myelomalacia degeneration of the white matter searing and syringomyelia so these are all the changes that are expected in a spinal cord in case of the late onset paraplegia now first we should differentiate that the neurological changes they are either because of the late onset paraplegia or it is because of the reactivation of the previous disease so for that we should know that in case of late onset paraplegia the patient will present with upper motor neuron features with spastic unsteady gait brisk reflex extensor plantar because the late onset paraplegia it mostly occur in the dorsal spine pathology and also the neurological deterioration is over months and year so even in this case the patient complains that spastic paraparesis has been since 2 years but in case of reactivation of the old heel disease all these symptoms will be accompanied by pain with the with local signs of the active disease like paraspinal tenderness or muscle spasm in the dorsal spine region so by this we can differentiate if it is a reactivation of the old heel disease or it is a late onset paraplegia now how to proceed with the treatment of the patient so in these cases anterior decompression of the spinal column with internal kyphectomy the internal gibbous that is formed has to be removed so this is internal kyphectomy to remove the internal salient which is indenting upon the spinal cord so this allows for the anterior transposition of the kinked spinal cord and it should be noted that no attempt is made at the correction of the spinal deformity so we will go back to the ct and x ray so this is the part which is the internal gibbous so this part need to be removed this is known as the internal kyphectomy so this will result in the anterior transposition of the spinal cord and the spinal cord will get decompressed but the entire deformity is no attempt of the deformity correction is done in case of the late onset paraplegia only the internal gibbous is removed now so we have discussed it now can we predict in so why the late onset paraplegia has occurred because we fail to predict the progression of deformity so how can we predict how can we predict in the initial active tb that this patient will go into the late onset paraplegia so for that we have the spine net risk sign 
So there are certain signs which can predict the spinal deformity in future. These are no, known as the spine at the risk sign. So these are the four signs. Separation of the facet joint, retropulsion, lateral translation and the toppling sign. So this is the separation of the facet joint. This is the retropulsion. So this is the retropulsion. So part of the, the dist destroyed vertebral column has retropulsed posteriorly. This is the lateral translation and this is the fourth is the toppling sign. So there is toppling, toppling of the vertebras. So the uh, toppling means that the this is the in this vertebra should be in between them, but this get destroyed. So there occur contact between the these two vertebras, which were we should not have been there. So these are the four signs. We have the separation of the facet joint. We have the retropulsion, lateral translation. and the toppling sign. So if we see these signs in the active TB patient, so we should go for the fixation at that time only to prevent the progression of deformity and occurrence of the late onset paraplegia at a later date. So that was all about the late onset paraplegia in a tuberculosis spine patient.